Yeah, it was, uh, you know, Vegas isn't necessarily my scene. No shock to anybody, but, um, you know, I'm an East Coast snob. So going out no to fan, Vegas no. and trying to find sleep there and whatnot is, is a struggle. But it was all good. Good to see a bunch of people have some fun, all that. I'm happy to be home. Well, it's not certainly my scene either, but, like, there's good food there. Wide. There's good people Food, I had there. two good Wide. restaurants. Yep. There's good shows there. Wide. Well, Super Bowl was there. Yeah. It was a great location. Football. The Super, the Super yeah. Bowl. It was everybody's city this past week. You know, especially if you're a U2 fan. Obviously. If yep. you're a U2 fan, oh, yeah. Super Bowl week was even better, you know, because you actually knew some of the songs they played on Wednesday. Yeah. That was a full article. You know that. Numerous articles about you burying them. I tried to find it. Really? I could not. I yeah, saw, I knew it. Post, I believe. I saw Fowler basically wrote a full article on his Instagram. Yeah, Fowler, it, it, Fowler was pissed. It felt like it was directed right at us. <laughs> did the yeah. Lord's work. He <laughs> was. Well, did Fowler went work. to a different show than what we went to. He did. Oh, he did? Yeah, because we went to the show that was shit, where they didn't play any of the songs that <laughs> oh. anybody knew. And I guess later in the Whoa. week, yeah. Friday, they played Yeah, like, Bono was like, oh, shit, let's play songs that people like. <laughs> And they did. And they did. Yeah. And people, Fowler was like, this is a great show. Yeah. I don't know what anybody's talking about. It's like, look at the set list, Fowler. Yeah. Look at the set You're list. You're welcome. I'm over to, yeah, it could have been because of Ty. Yeah. I'm happy that happened to Bono. You know, from what I've read, he <laughs> needed that. Someone needed to say it. Okay. Listen, I'm not some U2 super fan, but you go to Vegas, like we're not just going to some run of the mill U2 concert in the middle of the summer where if you're a U2 super fan, sure, you you take the D minus set list and then you act like it was the greatest concert ever. Cuz you got to see boy. Exactly. We're th we're there to see spectacle. We're s we're there to see the sphere. And most importantly, we're there to see and hear three or four songs that we've actually heard of before, and we didn't get any of that. Well, that's because we left early. <laughs> Two and a half, three can hours. Can I get in. the? Uh, can I get an impersonation again, Ty? Bono, just give me a quick <laughs> run again. Uh, that was more of like an English one. Bono is actually Irish, so. Um, but Bono it, McGregor, you got to place. <laughs> now I'm just kind of. I don't even remember what I said initially, but. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I mean, no one has actually ever heard of any of these <laughs> shitty songs that we're doing. We sh we should do the good ones, like Hello, Hello. The first song. Amen. Yeah. That How is that not the first song? Beautiful it, day. Hello, oh, hello. Hello. Yeah, we hello. <laughs> we say yeah. back. Right. Hi, great to see you. It makes and no sense. We're not carrying this nope. into another week. No, 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 no. No, we can't. Mm -hmm. nope. hey, you two ruined our Wednesday. They did. Let's leave it at that. We could make it a war. What do you mean? This could go on a long time. A lot of these you two people have been attacked. We don't need, have any we don't need a war. Understanding of anything. It's like, okay, were you there? Yeah. Were you, you weren't. So I don't want to hear it. We were there. And we're not the only ones. Remember, Rappaport came up later and was like, I didn't know any of the songs. Yeah. <laughs> so he said, free yeah. booze. So I'm a I YouTube to fan. It sucked. Yeah. Mike oh. Foss. Yeah, you two super fan. Super fan. He was emotional about going because he loves you two. First that ever much. YouTube show. He was crying yeah. when he found out yeah. he was going. Rossio, same thing. Yes. Yeah. Anyways, Dan, let's talk about the game. I'm sick of talking about you okay. two. Yeah. yeah. I get you two has done good for the world. For yeah. sure. Thank you, you two. Thank you, Bono. Fix Thank you so much, Bono. Thank, Thank you, Edge. Edge the crushed edge. it. The Edge, you sons edge. of bitches. Edge crushed it. So, <laughs> and the manager on bass. Oh, yeah. That guy. Oh, Kill man. It. Killing the it. The big, handsome drummer. Yep. Fantastic stuff. Just play something we know. Please. And also use the sphere for a show, not just to put your faces up there yes. right, for an hour and a half. That's not what we came for. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. Let's get to this. You weren't there. You have no idea. You're good, buddy. Yeah. You like you two? Uh, I don't dislike them, but I don't like them. I don't know their music. Indeed. Well, I see there. Like Usher? Oh, we like Usher. Yeah. Uh, I thought the halftime show was sick. I, I, like, I'm not a massive Usher fan, but I thought the show was awesome. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like my it re. I remembered like he had so many hit songs yeah. that I had kind of forgotten about, but I thought the show was awesome. Yeah, you gotta let it burn. I, I mean, there was a lot of those like taking me back to high school. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Junior high even. Yep. Then some college hits. Then little John pops up and right. he's on roller skates. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah, I, I. He's younger than I thought. I I thought he was older. Like I thought. Like Usher's like forty three or something. No, like that. he's got to be fifty. Yeah. Forty five. No, that's what I said, Pat. Like he was like sixteen when he was like killing it. That's Bono. Bono's throttling you. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, let's talk about the game. Patrick Mahomes cements himself as a Mount Rushmore quarterback last Mount, uh, last night. Obviously, future Hall of Famer. Obviously, he's only played for six seasons. He has three Super Bowls. This guy is phenomenal. He is stupendous. What did you learn about Patrick Mahomes last night that maybe you didn't know, or did anything kind of accent your points you've already had for Patrick Mahomes? 
Yeah, I, I don't think we learned anything different. I, well, I'll say this. The, the way that this season has gone and then the way that he kept them in it last night focus-wise, um, I, I think the star of the game was Patrick Mahomes. I think the reason the Chiefs win is because of their defense. I mean, that's – I said – before when Patrick came into the NFL, he was a phenom. He's now gone to Savant. You know, I, I think when you're oh, in the building last night, like the first half was a really weird feeling. You know, it was you guys probably watching on the broadcast. I don't know how much they kept camera on the field into the commercials or out of them, but like the body language from their offense was so off. They were absolutely shell shocked. The defense, and you guys know this, they had a little bit more juice on and off the field and whatnot. Offense was awful. But you kept seeing Patrick not blink as far as like shots on the sideline. Um, And I think the things that stood out for me in in central focus to Patrick was like how much control they gave him at the line of scrimmage to make some checks. Like he made some checks. You know, the third down that he dumps the ball off to McKinnon to the right on, I think it's like third and two. Um, in the fourth quarter, Patrick checks that play at the line of scrimmage. The shallow cross to Rasheed Rice in overtime, I think, on third and six. Mm-hmm. That's a check at the line of scrimmage, both by, like, the play call and the way he handles the protection. So, like, just, again, you know, we've seen him come into the NFL and be this unbelievable talent. But watching him, you know, win games in many ways because of his mind and his football IQ and his intellect – I don't think it was like learned last night, but it was certainly stamped in that in that fashion. Go ahead, AJ. Dan, were you surprised uh, afterwards to hear the difference between the Chiefs, how dialed in they were to hold the overtime situation and what their plan was compared to the Niners and the players, some of them not really exactly knowing, obviously, what their plan was and even knowing what the overtime rules were in the playoffs? Yeah, I was shocked. Number one, their head coach has, you know, been in a, the only overtime in Super Bowl history, obviously Kyle with the Falcons and the Patriots. So the fact that he experienced it, two, the rule changed like two years ago. And I think everybody that is a fan of the NFL or, or plays in the NFL knows why that rule got changed in regards to Patrick and, and Josh Allen and whatnot. So you know, I'm kind of shocked, or Brady, I'm, I'm kind of shocked that those guys don't know, like, the, the at least some capacity of the rule. Um, you know, and I was talking to Jeff Saturday because, obviously, Jeff coached in the NFL last year for a brief period of time. I was like, don't you think that's something where, you know, when that rule change happens, you guys know these, these meetings sometimes throughout the season, team meetings become so repetitive, and you try to find ways to have meetings in a different capacity – and so I'm shocked that like they didn't have somebody, at least to our knowledge right now, you know, drum up some of these different rules or rule changes to make sure that everybody knew. So I'm really surprised that and veterans like Armstead and Juszczyk didn't know. And I was, you know, again calling the game for you know the international feed last night. Oh yeah. Once Kyle took the ball, I immediately turned to Lewis and Fowler. I was like, that's crazy to take the football. And I think, you know, this is. I heard Kyle talk about the analytics and they wanted the ball third. My thought about it is it's all it's very similar to the Dan Campbell kick the field goal, go for it thought for me. The numbers say one thing, they factor, they matter. You have to take into account how you're playing and who you're playing. And Patrick Mahomes had just gone right down the field in regulation, marched right down the field. They didn't get stopped, they just ran out of time. That's how they kicked the field goal to tie it. And your defense was reeling at that point. Um, but also like Kansas city's defense was playing fantastic. So like you thinking, I'm just going to take the ball, march down and get points. I would have never given the ball with four downs to Patrick Mahomes. I would have never done that. And that's what you do when you take the ball first. Yeah. Because obviously whenever you have the ball first and you're on your own 25, you have no idea what the other team's going to do. So you might, if it's fourth and six, obviously punt that ball away because it's smart football. Whenever you're the second person that gets the ball, obviously you're in an advantage because you know exactly what you have to do. Okay, we have to kick a field goal. Well, it's four down territory until we get into field goal range. Oh, we have to score a touchdown. Well, it's four down, four down territory until we score a touchdown. Patrick Mahomes yep. actually chirped about it to NFL prime time who had a phenomenal post-Super Bowl show last night to Booger and Berman about the NFL rule, overtime rule, and playoffs. 
Yeah, we were going to kick if, yeah. if we got it. So, I mean, they, get, they let us know what, exactly. what we're going to do so we can go for it on that fourth down. Now, we talk about those situations all the time. I mean, we, we changed the rules, so, I mean, we can execute them on both ways. I don't right know how now. they're going to change it this time. I right love now. that. A little confidence, a little moxie, a little swagger, and some football IQ in there, which is exactly what Patrick Mahomes has displayed since he got in there. But, yeah, they had a fourth down where they had to pick it up. And it's like, yep. if they would have went first, do they punt that there? Yeah. And then what happens with the Niners coming down, especially with Jake well, Moody, who just hit a 55-yard field goal? It's just like, you want to be second? And I understand playing for the third possession, but you think Patrick Mahomes is going to let that thing get to a third possession? I'm not 100% sure right. to your and point, And that's the Hannah. thing. And, and, Pat, I think there was another very similar situation and location on the field, I want to say in the third quarter, where they had third and one. I think it was like their second or third drive of the third quarter – they have third and one. They don't get it, and it gets to, like, fourth and, you know, half a yard. And in my gut, I was like, I wonder if Andy Reid goes for this just because to try to generate some juice. And he punted the ball in that situation as well. So I truly believe if the, you know, situation's reversed and they have that fourth and one and they're the first team with the ball, because their defense was playing so great for Kent City, I would have guessed that over time they punt the football away. So that you just don't give – you, that's why who you play matters. You do not give an all-time great coach and quarterback four downs in that situation. Well, I think he'd punt it too because Tommy Tanzu. Oh, hey, yeah, sure. nukes. Don't Absolute worry. nukes. Punter should have won MVP last night potentially. You know, Patrick doesn't have the walk down the field game tie. Sure. Walked on the field game win yeah. in back-to-back -back series. You know, mm -hmm. Patrick Mahomes proves he's Patrick Mahomes. Might have a punter. You know, or kicker as the MVP last night. And that's how people were judging the game. They say, this game stinks. Mm. If it's a specialist bowl, I didn't see it that way. Mm. I thought it was beautiful. D Butch got a question for you, Dano. Yeah, we know uh, kind of who Andy Reid and uh, and Patrick Mahomes are at this point in their careers. Uh, Brock Purdy on the other side, obviously back to back NFC championships and now a Super Bowl. Came up short, you know, which most people do on, against Spags. Former UConn yeah. defensive coordinator as well. Uh, well what were your takeaways yes, from Brock Purdy uh, in this game and, and, and going forward? I know people are already asking, is he ever going to be able to win one? Can the <sighs> Niners win one with Brock Purdy? What's your thoughts on uh, 13 going forward? I thought Brock was sensational last night. I, I thought Brock missed one throw. It was the deep out um, or decision, the deep out that he throws that Mike Edwards comes over the top. And bats away. I thought he had Debo Samuel underneath. That was the decision that I sat there. I was like, yeah, that's uncharacteristic for him. But, dude, D but, uh, you know, going into that game, it was this Kansas City's defense is uh, it's awesome. You know, they 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 play very physical. They play great man coverage. He's going to have to have pinpoint accuracy. He did. I thought he avoided four or five sacks. Um, you know, to go against that. He missed defense. Debo, though. He missed Debo, oh, you know, when Chris Jones is in his face. He missed Debo. Yeah, but that's got to be, you. I mean, you have to credit Chris Jones a little bit, well, you know. Yeah, of and, course. And, and, and while, yes, he misses Debo, and that's fair, he also, like, four or five plays later throws a touchdown to Jennings on that drive. Now, it takes some time off the clock, and so does that change how the game goes? But, like, he, 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 like Chris Jones, I think, took away three touchdowns. Yep. So, you know, that defense had skunked Lamar in Baltimore's offense. You know, they did an okay job versus Josh Allen. Josh Allen was great against them. Tua, they mm -hmm. skunked that offense. You know, they're you know, the only quarterback to play good against that offense in since October was Josh Allen. I thought Brock Purdy was very f fantastic. And I thought that the ball placement, the tight window throws, he was aggressive with the football. He was convicted with the football. Um, I think if you do anything but walk away even more encouraged about Brock Purdy, we just look at football very differently. So here's some Hembo stats about Brock Purdy last night. Lamar Jackson, obviously the MVP. Josh Allen, Tua combined for a 43.8 QBR versus Kansas City defense in the playoffs. Brock's was a 69.8. Okay, it's 26% better. Great number. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Damn. You know nothing about it. A bit child, Dan. Yeah, and you dirty yeah. dog. What are you talking about? <laughs> Dan's like, <laughs> you, you it's dirty. like a yin yang uh, in number form. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's awesome. They mirror each other. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like upside down. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about, Dan? No, I was just talking about the difference between their performances and Brock's. Okay. So you said cool. That's on it. us then for automatically yeah, assuming sorry, that you. Sorry. Were, sorry, Dan. You were talking about 69. Sorry, Dan. Dan knows. You salty dog. Dan does not know.
Dan does not know. It's a man of I don't know. I think Dan's playing possum here. I think he is a bit of a dog. <laughs> no, Dan, Dan Orlovsky? <laughs> yeah, you're right. I, I'm, no. I'm, 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 I didn't get enough sleep. You're right. Anyways, <laughs> and none of us did. Um, those three had a 6.9. There's no way that's the right number. Yeah. <laughs> Hembo wouldn't have it, right? Those three, Lamar, Josh, and Tua, had a 6.9 QBR versus Kansas City's pressure in the playoffs. Brock was 74.1 pretty good mm. so there's another cool number you know there's another cool yeah. number there 74.1 it's like people want to kill brock they're going to kill brock 200 million people watch brock lose in the super bowl last night but what i saw to brock last night was a dude that came out firing on the biggest stage yeah. had a couple dots and he's still in his only his second year but that that niners team's fascinating man that, that's heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak what? after heartbreak what? after heartbreak seemingly what? for that niners team dan yeah it really you know, like Kyle Shanahan, who's one of the best coaches, like it, the difference of five or six plays maybe in his coaching career is the difference between we're talking about this four. guy as a Hall of Fame coach, mm -hmm. you know, and then, oh, my gosh. We, he, he's, Third and four, be, Dan. Said to me, Third and four. What do you mean? The, the, are you talking about the, the the play last night, third and four? Two minutes left or whatever it is. Yeah. Third and four. Be bad to down, right? Yeah. If they get that first down, we milk that thing yeah. until Jake Moody yeah. hits a game winner, and it's oh, hey, it's over. Yeah. It was another one, too. Jennings also had a, a play, whip route. Chris, Chris Jones. Yeah, hey, D-Butt, talk to me about this, too. Like, Because everyone – like, I also sit here, and you, this is what I said today. Like, you got to credit Kansas City a little yes. bit. Yes. Like, I love the fact, D-Butt, tell, tell me because – why does Karloftis go outside and McDuffie go inside? So often we see those defensive yep. linemen, right? They stem down and McDuffie goes outside. So one, and then two, and we talked about this a little bit on live last week, the fact that he jumps up and bats with his left arm versus the righty quarterback. I just think you got to credit the other team a little bit as well. Yeah, you, no, all, you always course. coach that pressure in the quarterback, you know, get a left up. You always say, obviously, the righty, but I think McDuffie did a great job pre-snap, not really giving it away until the absolute yep. last second. Him and 27 came from opposite sides. I think the old line slid that other way, so that kind of puts that left tackle on the island with uh, Karloftis, and then he's right in, in the sea gap, right in his face. Third and four, you're going to expect some type of man-to-man, -man, so it's going to be a quick hitter, but just a great job by Spags. He's been doing that all, I mean, his whole career, honestly. But to your point, you're talking about four or five plays. It's like, yeah. There's, yeah. I mean, that is that one. It wins you the Super Bowl. That one wins you the Super yeah. Bowl. Yeah. They're very, they're final. And then, like, sir, go ahead. No, I was gonna say their final play, the one that another one that Chris Jones disrupted. You were and, talking about Jennings yep. on the whip route oh, yeah. was was open in the flat. Yeah, like that wide open. open. Yeah, uh, wins the Super Jan Bowl. Yeah. Wide open. Yeah, man. It's just like the third quarter too. Like we were talking about it, the third quarter. You know, go, again, going into the game, it was gonna be it's paramount for San Francisco to be good on first downs offensively versus Kansas City's defense because you know in the third the, the second half third down you know Spags went you know three man rush two man coverage double spy the next third down he goes three man rush they fake a linebacker blitz they bring the other backer and they play uh, like combo double the, the next third down is two man that's the one that's almost picked off by McDuffie but if you go to first down in the third quarter, I think first downs, San Francisco ran, I think, five plays on first down. They got one total yard. Yeah, and second in the half, third quarter. That's third when that quarter, game yeah. started to spin. Yes. Yeah. And that's, you know, everyone's sitting there going, run, you know, run the football. You know, Staggs was great when it came to some of those linebacker pressures, you know, when you're trying to go run stunts. So I just, you know, Kyle, you feel terrible for him because he's, he's blown – three double-digit Super Bowl leads to the greatest of all time and the greatest of all time, it feels like. You talk about first down offense in the third quarter. Chiefs had eight plays for 57 yards. 49ers had five plays for one yard. I mean, they're just getting behind the sticks and then Spags <laughs> can cook, yeah. and then you're in trouble. And that third quarter was when it all flipped. So at halftime, the adjustments made by Spags, the conversation on the offensive side, hopefully Travis Kelsey wasn't punching Andy Reid grotesquely yeah. in the face. It's mm -hmm. like something happened from one team, something didn't happen for the other, and the one team's yeah. a dynasty, and the other team has now lost, the head coach has now lost three Super Bowls in which he had to lead. That is yeah. a bummer. Go ahead, AJ. Dan, when you when you look at the Chiefs' offense, I know Kelsey only had one catch at halftime. What did they do to kind of scheme him open in the second half, or what would, what did Travis do individually to get himself open? 
No, I mean, it's a, it, they did two things. Number one, they started either motioning with him or motioning to him, to his side. You know, really the start of the third quarter, you know, obviously the Drake Greenlaw injury is huge and Burks goes in, good players do, you know, but what they started to do was motion Kelsey. They would either start him on the left and motion him to the right and gain some advantage leverage wise, or they would get him in what they call like that in and out or sugar motion where they would start him on one side, he would walk to the center and then back. And so they were really trying trying to confuse you know San Francisco's secondary and then th- the story of the game for me is how much San Francisco's secondary struggled in communication with those motions you know they there's multiple examples of I think it's Burks and Logan Ryan Logan Ryan's you know been around forever you know they're trying to like debut and, and AJ could talk to this they would be on one side of the ball they would motion and they're running Burks and Logan Ryan and basically flipping from the linebacker spot all the way to the nickel and the nickel spot all the way to where the linebacker was and they just took advantage of some of those situations and really at the end of the game that's the story of it is and the third downs is as those guys getting out of position and then the game winner mm-hmm. you know with Miko Hardman again like you you show that little fake motion and if you watch everybody on San Francisco's defense look at their eyes like watch their eyes and watch the guy over the top of Kelsey he goes steps right. down and puts hands on Noah Gray and totally loses vision to the flat of, you know, Miko Hardman and Patrick peeks inside, dumps it outside. So really, AJ, the story is, you know, the the motion in Kansas City's offense, you know, really for the second year in a row and the lack of uh, proper communication on the back end. How about they trade for McColl in October? <laughs> You have some Jets fans obviously bringing up whenever O's, the mentalist, Mm -hmm. goes to the Jets camp, and he says, uh, all right, think to yourself, who are you playing in the Super Bowl? And he says the 49ers. That was when he was at the Jets training camp. Now he catches the game-winning touchdown against the 49ers in the Super Bowl. Jets fans just can't win. Nope. (laughs) Jets fans fans just can't win. It's going to get shoved in their face until they inevitably get one maybe. But, boy, what a come-up from McCole Hardman, Rasheed Rice. What? I mean, MVS. I saw him with some sick glasses Mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Afterwards, Pacheco living his best life. Travis Kelsey, obviously, in an offensive line coming back. They're nowhere near done, and Spags continues to cook. Connor has a question for you as Ty takes a shit. Yeah, Orlovsky uh, bringing up Jets fans. That's kind of how the Niners fans feel. I mean, I saw a lot of dejected fans on the uh, X last night. When you look at that team, I mean, there was one point when they were introducing the starting lineups, and their skill positions come across the board, and all of them are all pro except for Debo, and people can make the argument that he's damn near the best one, and they're all all pro. So like, if you're a Niners fan today, and you're looking at the season and looking forward, like where do they even get better? Like, how, how do you get, take a team like the Niners that essentially feels as though it is one of, if not the most stacked lineups in all of football, and say like, yeah, we can add pieces here, here, and here to get better while still paying all the superstars that we have. Yeah, I I don't – there's obviously not massive holes on that football team. I can make the case that Kansas City was better on both sides of the line of scrimmage last night. You know, I think one of the big takeaways was how physical Kansas City's defensive line and dominant at the line they were in comparison to San Francisco as that game went on. And so, again, I don't think there's a ton of holes outside of maybe you look to improve your offensive line play just a little bit. Obviously, Trent is the one of the, if not the best left tackles in all of football. So, um, you know, it, I don't know if you like you sit there and go, we are this piece away. You know, you're, you're as talented as anybody in football on the perimeter in your defense while they didn't play up to their level this year, expectation-wise, they were really good for the great majority of that game last night. So, uh, it, it's it's a you know a feeling that's got to be just dejected because so close again, and the quarterback play was even improved in comparison to the 2019 Super Bowl, and yet still wasn't enough. Did you hear that, AJ? Someone's throttling. Yeah, Damn, yeah, huh? Dan, you're getting throttled over there. What are you doing? You're driving from New York up to Connecticut? Uh, yeah. Well, you got NFL Live this afternoon? NFL Live this afternoon, yes, sir. Yeah. You, oh. you were getting crushed this morning by uh, Steven and Shannon. What was that all about? Yeah. They're ridiculous, dude. Those two are ridiculous. The, <laughs> the, 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 like, hey, whatever you say, I'm going to agree with. Happened a little bit today. Happened a little bit this season. <laughs> they're they're oh. like, to sit there and say... 
I'm just making fun. Uh, to sit there and say like, oh, you know, Brock Purdy, I still got questions about him. I was like, yo, so he lost on the last play of the game to the best quarterback in the world. And we're going to, we have questions about him. Um, so, yeah. I already see Axelrod typing up what you just said yep. about Steven and Shannon cooking over there. Uh, you gaslight awful announcing though by retweeting them all the time. Big time. You're so proud of them, but they're certainly going to, they're going to go after you right there. Uh, Tone has a question for you, Dano. Yeah, Dan, um, as someone who hasn't watched the All-22 yet and wasn't calling the game last night, uh, Kittle had a quiet night. Were they keeping him in? Were the, the, the Chiefs just have a, a good plan against him? What? How come Kittle was so quiet last night? Yeah, you got have to give a ton of credit to Justin Reed. He was tremendous in coverage. I thought he was really physical at the line with them on multiple occasions. Um, you know, part of that is if you go back and, you know, we talk about Chris Jones and him ruining a couple plays – you know, those two or three plays that he ruins or, you know, he makes Brock leave the pocket and dump it off to Jennings one time, you know, you're going to have big plays to George Kittle. And so it was a little bit of the perfect storm of, again, you got to tip your hat to Justin Reed. I thought his physicality was a big part of making sure to throw off some of the timing. And then in the, the – Huge opportunity to make some big time plays. Chris Jones ruins them. Carl Loftus ruins them. So you know there was a there was a lot of like the perfect storm situation uh, when it comes to you know credit to Kansas City, but also you know some missed opportunity for San Francisco. You say ruins like ruin, ruin. So like ru like ruined like ruined R U I N E D ruin. 